Oh, hey guys, it's me. And this is the second video of the Flock Finger Lakes channel. And I figured I'd do some more of these establishing videos because we just have an ample opportunity to describe what we're doing here and who we are and how we all came together to put together this dream. So I thought in this video, I would share with you who my other flock members are. You get to meet the flock. Although you'll see that there's nobody else sitting around me. <laughs> it's gonna be really hard to coax my other members into in front of the camera. In lieu of that, in lieu of them not coming into the camera, I am going to embarrassingly talk about them. So if they watch this video, they're going to probably end up blushing because they have many fine things to say about them. I think that when they do make a cameo appearance in subsequent videos, you will get a sense of who they are as people or as a, as a person. And then you could see whether my description of, of each of them is, is right <laughs> or is, uh, is fitting. You know, I love talking about my very good friends. And I think what maybe astute listeners will be able to garner from my descriptions of my friends is maybe um, some life lessons and relationships because you know, if I didn't have tight and strong relationships with my friends, this dream probably would have never come together. So I feel eternally grateful for having them in my life. And so I feel like it's my duty to be able to describe my friends to you and to uh, introduce you to the other members of the flock. So with that being said, there are two other members of the flock. There's my friend Joey, and then there's also Sonder. And if you are tuning into my other YouTube channel at Plant One On Me, many of you will know that Sonder jumped on board um, later to Plant One On Me and started help to film. And I've introduced him across the videos in many different times. So if you've been following along in the videos, you'll have actually gotten to, to meet Sonder. And he also shows up in some of my courses <laughs> as well online. I can't remember, yeah, Houseplant Masterclass and the 125 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet he'll, he'll make cameo appearances in. But hopefully both of them will make more cameo appearances here on the Flock channel and you'll get to know them better. So with the other members, I will probably go with Joey first because I have known him the longest. And I met Joey, gosh, I wanna say it was in January of 2013. Um, so that's a little over eight years ago now. And I met him, strangely, I think he had known of my work through another friend, but we had never been introduced that way. Uh, I saw his work on Kickstarter. He was raising funds for People of the Delta, which was just an exquisite film in the Omo Valley of Ethiopia. Hi, I'm Joey. I'm a photographer and filmmaker who's been working with the tribes of Ethiopia's Omo Valley for the last four years. The reason why I've been so fascinated with these people is because they challenge the way that I live my life and reveal to me a completely different way of interpreting the world, a way that's currently endangered. I've been given great opportunities in my commercial work, but my trips to the Omo Valley and the people that I've met there hold a special place in my heart. I've always kept very close to the people that I photographed. Over time, I've earned their trust. Last year I was here photographing everybody, yeah? Lots of people come and take photos, but they don't really give anything back. So I came back this year again, all the way from New York City, just to give a small gift. And to just to give you a little bit of a back history on Joey, uh, as, a, as a teenager right out of high school, he paid for his way out of Canada, because he's Canadian, and was fascinated by ascetics. So people who you know, basically walk around with no belongings and give themselves to God or the Lord or um, whatever they, they pray to. And he went to India and he went to Ethiopia and he went to all these different places. And one of the things that he wanted to create was this film, a scripted film starring people of the Omo Valley. So starring actual native indigenous people, not anybody posing to be indigenous. And this was probably if I recall correctly, one of the hardest works that he ever did.
isining dur usia kota ka. Ana, aku nasi si, syarat ada, tak kira ada entah, don zumi dengan don zumat ini, entah iradi si ada ini. Wangi be, kulla be, halam kuantian, eh be, rasa be, eh nampazin sabar dan, masuk kulla be, syida be, kumra kumra. Ini list tu, list dah tu, baru ni. List edit, ni apa? Kaya gadi, list edit, ni apa? Kamera aku. List, baru mana tak? List osadi, maragadi. Ah, hari baru ya aku cina ayam es, tunggu gunung kadung sekitar lat. Aga, ina, tak guru. Aku rayu naik segala mana, musuh gua kaki dan kaki ini. Aku rayu naik segala mana kaki ini. Asalnya nyur cakap saya lah, sedikitnya nyur kerian, sedikitnya kur, amari nyur kat ayaman. The photos, the video. He didn't have the video at the time. He just had photos to express what he was doing on Kickstarter, and I was really taken by his work. It was just high quality work. I read a little bit more about his background and his history. I saw that we had possibly some interesting connections. And my initial reaction was like, wow, I'd love to meet this person. And I wonder if I could help him in his work. So I, you know, obviously I gave to the campaign on Kickstarter and I felt really compelled to reach out to him and to say, hey, who, this is who I am. Um, just gave to your Kickstarter campaign. Absolutely love what you're doing. You know, here's some connections that we possibly have together, and how can I be helpful to you? Uh, he reached out to me pretty soon afterwards, and we met up. And I ended up doing—I was doing a podcast series during that time, and I ended up having him on my podcast series, so I got to know him even a little bit more. And that actually also helped him because it helped to get his work out there across a different audience. And ever since then, we became really, really tight friends. And through that process, I really wanted to work with him to help get his work out there more. And whenever I needed some photography, Joey would come to my aid. We wanted to photograph summer in a studio setting, but we also wanted to bring in some natural elements so not everything is composited. We had this beautiful plant wall built. It gives us something a little bit to work with in camera and to get something quite natural. So we, and I should have to say, we only lived like a block away from one another. So that was really cool too. So it was very easy to be able to connect and hang out and um, work together. And we worked on several projects together. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and what I love about both Joey and Sonder, they have discipline, they work really hard, they're passionate people. They know what they love and they work towards that and they have talent to boot. And, you know, sometimes you have people with fire in their belly, but like not enough talent. Or if they don't have talent, they don't have the discipline to get the skill sets in order to be able to take them someplace. Um, or somebody has really good talent, but they don't have the discipline and the fire in their belly to, or the ambition to, to really go out there and do what makes them tick um, or they live their life of, in fear and they don't go out and do anything and both Joey and Sandra are not like that um, they're just the the total opposite and I really admire that in them and uh, and you know I know Joey what brings him to life is being able to go out there and travel at this point in life and and meet new people and to get to know different cultures and peoples and places and it's not about like 
traveling and getting another stamp in his passport. It's, you know, he has been photographing subjects. Right now he's like working on a book in Ethiopia and he has been photographing some of the same subjects over the course of a dozen years. And it's just amazing to be able to, um, you know, see those people through his eyes and his friendships that have developed from that, which is just like so cool. And then, you know, he's also, his last book that he did was on Kurdish guerrilla fighters. You know, he went and paid his way out and figured out ways to get over to Iraq and Iran and Kurdistan and Syria and all those places that some of us would never dare to go. And then went to the front lines and, and really photographed some of the, the fighters there and really captured like a human element that sometimes maybe a documentary photographer, a pure documentary photographer won't be able to do because he does set, like he has, a, he's a portraiture photographer. So it's this combination of like, portraiture and documentary, or he photographs them in the way that he would his commercial clients. Anyway, so it's fascinating guy, fascinating life, and, uh, and really, really good friend who I take care of his plants when he's away and he's always away. But now that I'm away, I don't know. It's, it's every plant for him himself or herself or themselves. So, um, so yeah, so that's been a real joy to be able to, to do this. And Joey was the one who instigated this. He was the one who approached me and said, hey, would you think about doing this? And I love that. I love that because yes, I was thinking about doing it, but sometimes you need that little starter, that little kindling of the fire to be able to put that in your head and say, okay, yeah, I, I got to do this. Because as soon as he started to send listings off of Trulia or Zillow or something like that, I started to look myself and take it a little bit more seriously. And sometimes that's all you need is a little friend to kind of like push you forward. So that's who Joey is. Uh, he's very well traveled. Uh, he's very well spoken and, uh, and he's got ambition and talent. And I, and I love that. And that moves on to Sonder, who also, like I said, like Joey, just has incredible talent and ambition. And I met Sonder seven years ago now, so not long after I met Joey. And I met Sonder at my friend's uh, celebration party because she had just sold her company, which is Green Spaces, which basically was a co-working space before co-working spaces were, was like a hot commodity or hot thing. She had a co-working space for like-minded, environmentally minded companies to come together and share resources and share ideas and to collaborate together. So she sold her company uh, to Impact Hub and she was celebrating. And I don't usually go out in New York City. I very rarely, you know, go out. I'm like definitely more of a, 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 a homebody kind of person. But I hadn't seen her in a long time. And of course, like it was something to really celebrate. And it's always like good people there. So I decided to, to go out. And Sonder was at the event. And he had actually come across, strangely enough, the same conversation series, maybe not the conversation series that I had with Joey, the podcast that I did, but one that I did with another uh, compatriot of mine, Simon Sinek, who actually was um, one of the co-publishers for my book, How to Make a Plant Love You. So you could see how all these like connections and friends kind of come together in your life. Yeah. So Sonder was very much into what he was saying. And he said, oh, I saw your podcast and I really wanted to meet you. And and that was great. So, and, and what Sonder offered to me was kind of the same thing that I had offered to Joey. Um, Sonder said, you know, this is what I do, which by the way, Sonder's a, a more of a visual communicator. He does animation as well. So he helps to design graphics or motion graphic design, if you will. But he's also a visual communicator. So he works across different mediums. So yes, he could do a little graphic design. Um, yes, he could do videography and cinematography and things like that. So he has a specialty though in animation, but could work across the bar, which is really helpful when working with clients because he could advise clients and say, well, you want this, but I think this is a better way to be able to communicate what you want to do. He offered me um, help. He said, 
this is what I'm capable of. Can I offer you any help on some of the things that you're doing? Which is kind of similar to what I did with Joey. I was like, you're amazing. Your work is amazing. How can I help you? And it's interesting, you know, thinking about this and how we all came together that way is by offering help to one another because oftentimes, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time that somebody reaches out to you, whether it's an email or direct message or phone, is they, they want something for you from you. Um, very rarely does somebody say, I want to be able to help you or your vision is amazing. Here are my capabilities. Is this helpful for you? And if not, what would be helpful? <laughs> very few people do that. So when you have like so many folks coming at you saying, you know, what's wrong with this or what's this or can I have your time for this or can I take you to coffee blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, it all, be all of a sudden becomes white noise. So when somebody comes out of the shadows and says, this is what I do, can you use any of my services? Is this really helpful to you? Um, it's like a breath of fresh air. And so I listened to him and I listened to, to where he wants to go in life. So I asked him, well, what, what do you want to do? And he said, well, I really want to use my skills to communicate things that I believe in and that share my values. Like most nights, I would lay down and just let my mind zone out on some music, preferably without lyrics. And I would just imagine what my ideal life would be like. And I would dream of working for big clients and big studios and with amazingly talented people. And that happened at Buck. But working with the studio, you don't often have as much control over the clients that you work with. And it never really sit well with me that my skills were being used to advertise products and services that I didn't really believe in nor cared about. I wanted to use my skills to promote companies that I thought were putting something valuable into the world. Which is how, very much is how I operate because you know, I worked in the fashion world for quite some time and I only worked with brands that were more aligned with my values because I was like, if, it, if I'm gonna do this, I really want to represent those brands and the people behind those brands that I actually believe in or from products that I would use or services that I would actually use myself and that would be helpful and leave a lighter footprint on the planet, right? So this was really much in line with, um, with what I was thinking. And, uh, and so, yeah, I said, absolutely. Like we should start, you know, working together. And I did have, a, I actually had a project in mind that we could work on. But the funny thing is, is that Sonder really reminded me of one of my best friends who I miss dearly. He's amazing. He lives up in Maine and he's kind of like trying to do something very similar to, to what we're doing here in New York. And I so wish he would come down to flock. Um, but that means he would have to like leave everything that he's doing in Maine behind. And I don't want to like press that on him, but my friend Paul, and it just so happened that Sonder was working at one of the premier animation, motion graphic, visual communication studios in New York city at the time, which was Buck. And he had this vision of working with, um, clients that align with his values, right? Well, I found this out eventually, maybe on the second or third day that we were speaking and I was like, oh my gosh, do you know my friend Paul? His name is Paul America, by the way. How cool is that? So I was like, do you know my friend Paul? And he said, no. And I said, well, he used to work at Buck. And he went down the same route. And then he went and started building earth ships out in Taos, New Mexico. This will blow your mind. I mean, my house has plants in it, but not this many. Really cool, right? Fish pond. Pretty flowers. This house that we're staying in, the Phoenix, is actually about 5,000 square feet, and about 2,000 square feet of this is dedicated to growing greenery. So we got a lot of oxygen and also if you don't mind me saying, and eating in front of you, a lot of food. And you know, Paul's the type of guy who like runs around with like no clothes on and no shoes and is just like super crazy and amazing and will like literally give you the shirt off his back 
if he's wearing one. <laughs> hey, Airship family, it's your boy. Paul America is still down here in Puerto Rico, enjoying the, uh, the surf and the sun and the hot, the hot weather. Uh, what a nice time it is. Oh, yeah. So they call this Playa Blanca, it means white sand. As you can see here, this beautiful, this beautiful white sand beach. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and so I was just like, and, and that kind of giving, that givingness is, uh, is indicative to, to Sonder too. And I was like, oh my God, you are like so like brothers from another mother. And, uh, and then I introduced those two together and they agreed they were kind of like cut from the same cloth. So it's amazing how like the galaxy just, I don't know, it's like you have a gravitational pull and it just pulls the people who you really vibe with like closer and you kind of want to get in and like hug them. So yeah, so Sonder and I had been working on some projects together and he works on his own individual projects as well. All right, so let me show you what we're gonna make and we're gonna build this step by step. Imagine this to be a scale from zero to 100%, for example, and on that scale we have a couple of points and then there's another data range here. So what's cool about this is that this is fully controllable by this control panel over here. So here I have the tube thickness. If I set that to 200, all of a sudden everything scales down to 200. So now the whole animation updates to this. And then as I was shooting Plant One On Me, he was like, you know, I really like what you're doing and I really believe in what you're doing, getting education out about plants. And he was interested in this and said, you know, can I help you again? And again, there goes back to like Saunders' willingness to be able to help. So um, he was able to give me like a pretty good deal in order to be able to you know, film the, the channel. And he said, I'd help you for a year. And then uh, before I get back onto some of my other projects and he's stuck with the channel. Thailand is a vibrant country with breathtaking landscapes and a strong cultural identity. Knowing that many of the world's most interesting plants come through Thailand, I wanted to experience that firsthand. So I took a trip to see what I could discover. One thing is for certain, whether in a city market, mall, or the mountains, the Thai people have honed their plant skills and elevated their deep, instinctive love for plants to a world-renowned cultural craft. But sometimes trips don't always go as planned. Tune in to the latest episodes of Plant One On Me on YouTube, starting October 10th. I, I didn't even say this, but Saunders from the Netherlands. He traveled through Australia and lived in Australia, was in Nepal, did a lot of traveling, and he moved to the United States when he was 18, I believe. Didn't know a lick of English. One of the things that was really interesting to him, this is what really connects to Flock, is that he actually went to a more of a vocational school and learned carpentry because school, you know, kind of the reading, writing, arithmetic kind of stuff really didn't resonate with him. Same thing with Joey. You know, Joey left after high school, um, but, and Sonder had vocational training for carpentry skills, which is kind of like a lost art, let's be honest. He did that, but then got into motion graphics design and now really wants to get back into the architecture and carpentry and uh, is learning some new new tricks of the trade, which is amazing and is very handy with, with tools, which is great for having a homestead. <laughs> and Oh, and then also traveled the world and was very interested in different alternative ways of living, sustainable living, and documented some of that you know, over the last, you know, 10, 15 years. And that's been really helpful because all of that stuff that he was interested in has been able to get actualized in what we're starting to do here in the Finger Lakes of New York with Flock. And so for us, this is like a real dream come true. 
As an artist, um, your own life is probably the most important thing that you'll ever design uh, before someone else comes in and designs it for you. So my environment and who I interact with on a daily basis like directly influences the quality of my life and the experience I have and therefore also the inspiration that I get from life. For me, I think like, you know, Joey and Sonder had worked together now and again through, through me, um, but I guess like I'm probably the connector between, um, between everybody. And I'm definitely much more of a, um, even though I liked, I'm a more of a homebody, I'm definitely more of a connector. Like I like to make connections. And, and it was one of the things that I, you know, when I got involved a little bit more in Joey's work, I liked to make connections. I liked to, in, with Sandra, I like to make connections back to, to Paul because I thought it would really add a lot to each of those people's lives. And, uh, and that's, that's kind of amazing. So for here, I, I think I'm going to, you know, take on that role of connector and being able to connect people to the property and to one another and, um, and, and actually see a lot of the projects come to life through those connections and through those relationships. So I'm ex excited to actually build that. And I'm not gonna talk you know, much about myself because I feel like I talked a little bit about myself through the lens of my friends, right? But uh, I'll link to a video that I did on Plant One On Me to give you a little bit more of like my background if you're curious. But I did live up here in this area for a few years and I absolutely loved it. I love the people, I love the landscape. It's so beautiful. I love the mindset of the majority of people up here. And I love that it is a little bit more diverse. They're, not everybody thinks alike. Uh, I'm not gonna say like everybody thinks like me because it's not like that. And I like that there is a little bit more of a diversity. There's, you know, it's split a little bit more politically, if you will. I don't really wanna talk about politics, but it is like people, you know, have the their different versions of life and uh, and express that in different ways. And I think that's only, you know, in a way going to make us stronger by coming together if we're able to actually talk about it and communicate um, with one another about it. And that is one thing that we um, really learned together as friends is being able to communicate with one another. And if something is irritating us or doesn't sit well, um, we have to bring it up right away because it's just only going to blister and blister and blister until you know you're going to be like a volcano and you're going to blow and you're going to be like ah oh, i can't stand it and you did this and you did that we don't want to get there um we've worked uh, a lot on our relationships over the last six seven eight years together and i think it's just going to be the start of um, a stronger relationship and i think by coming together and asking ourselves very hard questions on paper, on paper, we asked ourselves questions and like put signatures and everything because we really wanted to go in, not blindly, but eyes fully open of what we're actually getting into. And, uh, and the only way that we were able to do that is by getting to know one another better. So maybe I'll talk about that in another episode, but I kind of feel like ah, I'm just a very shining, happy, uh, friend <laughs> who just became like a PR agent for my friends um, and just you know that's what I said I love talking about um, my relationships with them I think they're just really incredible people and I'm just so excited to be doing this and that is people that is our flock all right see you later